Esther, interestingly, Esther is one book that does not have the name of God. The entire book is written without the mention of God in the entire book of Esther. And that's why some people who don't have understanding, when they read the book of Esther, they use it for pageant, beauty pageant. You know, and you hear people say, one night with the king, what an insult. Why will I be going for one night with the king when the king lives inside me? Why do I want to have a one night stand with the king when the king lives in me forever? I don't need one night with the king. I have eternity with the king. Glory to God. He lives in me. But when people don't understand, you know, you know, when people don't understand the gospel, you are given an aspiration gospel. A gospel where you are aspiring to be. The gospel of Christ is not aspiration. The gospel of Christ is what has been done already. You don't aspire anything in the gospel. You only receive what has been done. So that one night with the king is a scam. There's nothing like that. You and Christ are together forever. I will never leave nor forsake you. I will be with you forever. So you don't need one night. You have forever. Isn't that some good news here tonight? So Esther is one book where there is no mention of God. And that's why people who are not understanding the message of the scripture can use the book of Esther for all kinds of things. But it's actually the message of Christ. How does Christ come into the book of Esther? Esther could not see the king on, until after three days of fasting. So she asked the whole of Jerusalem, Israel, to fast together with her. And that on the third day, she will appear before the king and ask for the redemption of Israel from their enemy, Mordecai. And if she perish, she perish. And that was a type of death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus died, was buried. On the third day, he arose and he went up to the right hand of the father and appeared before the king on your behalf. And I have news for you. And that was your redemption. That was your freedom from the oppression, from the chains of darkness. And he delivered you from the kingdom of darkness and has translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. When he died, you died. When he was buried, you were buried. When he rose, you rose. Am I talking to somebody here? He has quickened us together and raised us up together and made us sit together with him. Where? In the heavenly. So the message of Esther is the message of death, burial, and resurrection. Listen carefully, everybody. No book is allowed in the scripture that doesn't have the message of Christ. There are extra books, but those books are useless because they don't have Christ in them. A book only passed the test of being canonized when it had Christ in it. So the 66 books are tied together by one message. And that message is Christ. It's the message of Christ. Remember, our theology is Christology. Our theology is Christology. The Bible is a theology. And the theology of the Bible is Christology. But in the study of Christology, we arrive at the mission of Christ, which is soteriology. And when you study soteriology, the essence and the reality of his death, burial, and resurrection, which brought salvation, is only made visible in your heart by the spirit, the work and the work of the spirit, which is pneumatology. Pneumatology. And the practice of pneumatology is ecclesiology, which is our study in relationships.